Good morning, boys and girls. I wanted to read to you this morning a story called Growing Good. It's a story about how growing things can actually transform a community. All his life, Samuel had lived in the shadow of the box factory. Each morning for four years, he'd woken up to its brick walls. So one day the factory closed and they knocked it down. When the dust had settled over everyone's furniture, Samuel could look across the empty space. Now he could see Jade's flat and Faustin's flat and Ara's flat. And he could see the sun shining down instead of just shining on and the rain falling from the sky instead of just raining, running down the factory walls. So what's going on? It's and what's going in its place? His granddad Jess wanted to know when the planners came. We don't want nothing taller. No plans yet. We'll see what the people want, he was told. But it's got to make good use of the space. But Samuel enjoyed having the space with nothing on it. It was a football pitch one day and a cycle track the next. It was a fireworks display and a fairground. And then it was just a space again. One day, Samuel was going the quick way across to Jade's. He suddenly stopped and pointed to something he'd nearly trodden on. What's this, Granddad? He shouted. Peeping up through the dusty soil was something growing. A tendril. A plant taking a shy look at the world. Don't know what that is, Granddad just said. Samuel left the plant and ran on to play with Jade. But Granddad Jess kept it in his head, and when they got home, he looked it up in a book. Old English foxglove, he told Samuel. That seed slept there all these years before they built the factory. With a little bit of warmth and a drop of wet, it's coming to life again. He sat in his chair and told Samuel about the old plants of St. Lucia. Bananas and orchids and bamboo and hibiscus. He spoke with his eyes closed, and Samuel knew he was seeing pictures in his head. Somewhere else altogether from here. Come on, he said to Samuel one day when Samuel's mother had gone for a walk. He took him out to where the foxglove was growing and started measuring out the empty space. Samuel held the curly tape measure as Grandad Jess marked the ground into plots. That gives everyone so much with room for paths in between. For what, asked Samuel? For allotments or gardens, said Grandad Jess. He put a rope round their own plot and the two of them started digging the soil. Cobbing his granddad, Samuel pushed down with his foot, pulled up with his hands and only stopped to watch the worms. While they worked, people peeped and people peered over their fences, through their windows, round their back doors. The next day, Jade's grandmother was out roping a plot too and digging it. But Steve Toff from next door didn't want gardens. What we want is somewhere to put our cars, he growled. A decent car park. All the same, by the weekend, there were ten different families out there, forking and digging, troweling and dibbing, firming in and watering. It wasn't long before the planners buzzed in like bees. Good use, they wagged their fingers. What other plans you got? Granddad Jess asked as Samuel carried a watering can to Jade's row of seeds and Ara found some string for Samuel's St. Lucia beans. I've got plans, declared Steve Tot, wanting to know how soon a car park would be rolled out. There's no final decision till later this year, the planner said. You'll know at the end of summer. So you can come back then and see us, said Grandad Jess. When my fennel comes up, I'll give you some to flavour your fish. If you can find somewhere to park, Steve Top pushed in. But week by week, more people dug plots. Grandad Jess drew up a plan and put it on his fence. Steve Tot put up a paper for people to sign. All who want a residence car park. Samuel didn't notice any of that. His eyes were on the strip he planted with seeds, watching for the St. Lucia beans to start to climb. 
He watched and watered, and when he thought he saw something that didn't belong, he weeded. And all the strings grew, and up the strings grew the beans, with one plant in the species, in the spaces between. The spring went into summer, people all out there on their plots, old and young and in-betweens. There was laughing and music and pronging of forks and lifting of spades, but never much shouting, except from Steve Tot if a bee came his way. And still all round the houses with his paper he went. When people weren't keen, he told them how cars could get scratched in the road, after which some of them signed. Then Samuel helped Grandad Jess go round the gardens with paper of their own, an invitation to run a charity day at the end of the season, and everyone they asked signed this paper. Meanwhile, plants started to grow always too, helped by words of encouragement from the gardeners. And those plants must have understood, because when the summer sunshine gave off its true warmth and the rain fell soft, the plants began to flourish. Onion and okra, sorrel and spinach and rhubarb and raspberry and lilac and lilies, potatoes, pumpkin and poppies. Different leaves, different flowers, different colours, different uses. Some for eating, some for seeing, some for smelling. The planners came on the charity day. They looked at the old factory site covered in green leaves and bright blooms and succulent fruits and pods. They looked at the growers in their colourful clothes as bright as the plants, and at the jazz bands swinging up and down the paths between the plots. They put their heads in a huddle and shook them and nodded. Then they called Steve Tot over and Grandad Jess. Well, this looks like good use to us, they said, and what people want. What do you say, Mr Tot? Mr Tot hadn't got many names on his paper. Some people with bright flowers in their hair and hands had come to cross their names off. Hmm, he said, well, I'll just have to see how it goes. The planners looked at Samuel's strip. What have you got there, young man? Samuel told them. Beans from St. Lucia. And in between old foxgloves from what was... And in between old foxgloves from what was growing here, said Samuel. That's nice, they said. But Samuel wasn't listening. He was off with Jay dancing behind the jazz band in the garden celebration. It's quite wonderful how plants transform with the seasons. And quite wonderful too how communities can transform and land use can transform. It was amazing during the lockdown, wasn't it, when suddenly there's less cars and everybody's out walking. And not just walking, but saying hello to each other and spotting teddy bears and watching the clear air around them. Anyway, things change. Have a lovely week. Bye.